when it was first compiled and written down, you believe that it was from him speaking Greek? The, the Tanakh would have been written in, in uh, Ivri or, or Hebrew and then Aramaic. <laughs> the New Testament would be written in the, in the, in the lingua franca of the time, which would be uh, Greek. For, so, for instance, even your diaspora Jews like Philo, who lived in Alexandria, he wrote in Greek. But your Palestinian Jews also wrote in Greek. And the reason why is because it was the lingua franca. So like uh, Josephus, his writings are in Greek, and he was a Palestinian Jew who spoke Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Interesting. But uh, what, what I mean is, is, so Jesus transmitted the New Testament, right? Yes, he is the mediator of the New Covenant. Okay. In, okay. in Luke twenty two twenty. And so my, my question was, did he, okay, so the language that he transmitted the new testament was it do you guys believe it was it from greek or from aramaic well it, it like i said it would have been it would have been the same situation as you have with the quran so the quran has him speaking in arabic and he didn't ever speak arabic so <clears throat> whatever he spoke would have been transmitted in whatever the lingua franca is i don't know he could yeah, like he could have, he could have spoken hebrew could have sp- it all that doesn't matter the only reason why we're on this subject Mm-hmm. is because you're trying to find a way to have some type of justification for rejecting the Gospels and also to try to justify the fact that your prophet contradicted the Gospels. No, it's, it's, really, it's really just kind of a discursive argument because God, on the day of Pentecost, spoke in 16 different languages which were recorded, right? They all heard uh, the, the wondrous... Uh, message of God in their own language and one of those languages was Arabic so the first mess messianic sermon that any Arabic speaking people heard was that Jesus was unalive by crucifixion rose again and was divine it was changed six centuries later so it doesn't really matter what the text was written in you're just making a, a much ado about something that uh, you know is, no. is kind of inconsequential no, it, it absolutely matters i mean and, and it I, I've doesn't learned matter because god intended his message to be universal to have universal scope and universal power so it would have had to have been written in a language that could be properly translated <laughs> effectively in other languages yeah so it does matter I've it learned doesn't so, matter so, hold on hold on Let's not speak over each other, all right? Number one, I didn't join the live because of the reason you, you said. I just came here to make one correction, and I was going to leave, but they wanted to continue having a discussion. Number two, you know, I do have a, a limited understanding of, of you know, uh, Christianity. So uh, I'm not here to argue, debate, pick anybody's religion apart. But if you're asking me for my position as to why I reject the the uh, modern day Angel, it's because number one, it matters when you translate a a, a, a holy book into a different language, like like ours may, is. May I ask why? Language. Can I? I I'm explaining right just now. Just let him. Just let him finish that. Yeah, like ours is <laughs> right. I read. I read. The, the the Quran in English, right? I know for a fact that it does not have the same value or meaning uh, that it does in Arabic. And the reason I know that is because I listen to people, I listen to scholars uh, explaining in English the, the value and depth and meaning that can't be translated by my simple reading, right? So that kind of thing matters. But that's not to say... That's not to say that the Quran or the, the, the Bible translated into a different language loses all its meaning or all its value. And, and my personal belief is that I still consider the, the Bible a holy book, but it's just a holy book that's been adulterated, right? So there's still a lot but of you value. Have to prove, you have to prove that. And those are claims that you have to qualify. Uh, talk to the talk to the scholars who've studied this topic, man. Okay, I mean, I've listened do, to do them. You, okay, do you have any theological credentials? 
No, absolutely not. Okay, well, I do. I do. I, I have the credentials that these that most of these scholars you're talking about have. Exactly. And what I'm telling you is that there's no textual critical or form critical or redactional critical scholar who mm-hmm. claims that the message of the Bible has been uh, <clears throat> destroyed. Then you, you are the, the, you are on a lo- wrong platform. You know, with all, all due respect, you're on the wrong platform. You're sitting here trying to talk to laymen. And, and, I, and, I know, and, but what I'm trying to here. let you know is okay. throwing around scholars means nothing to me. I'm not throwing that's, around scholars. I'm I, not. You, you are. You're saying that Christian scholars <laughs> say that your text has been corrupted, and no, you're I'm not naming. You're not naming any. No, no, that's not what I said at all. You're completely misinterpreting what I, I just said. You asked me to bring you proof. I told you that this is not my field of expertise go talk to these scholars and i did not mean in any way shape or form christian scholars i meant muslim scholars who have studied christianity the bible these kinds of things go talk to them you are on the wrong platform you should be talking to those kind of people not no i I do i I, my my uh, library is awash with uh, scholars uh, on the islamic side And 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 what i'll tell you is they're not too much of scholars because they actually say the same thing you say which is what we as Christians call a Dawa script. That means that means from the academy to the tent in a in a uh, poor Bedouin neighborhood, you say the same thing. Yep. that they say, whether yep. you're in the academy or you're in the streets of of Baghdad or Cairo or whatever. Okay. So it's a Dawa script that you guys have. There's really no scholarship to it. You start mm-hmm. with Muhammad is true, and. Uh, mm-hmm. The Bible is a clear indication that Muhammad is not a true prophet. His message is not true. And so what I have to do is I have to figure out a way to discredit and marginalize the Bible. And that's what Muslims have been doing for 1400 years. And it's you're going to do it today. You're going to do it tomorrow because every day you wake up, that Bible's going to be a mirror that tells you that you're in error and you follow error. <laughs> And, 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 I, and I say that because it's absolutely true. Yeah. So, then, uh, I, I, you know, just to cut to the chase. What, is, what is, anyway, what is, I'll, I'll mute up and you guys can continue. What is it? No, I'd I like to ask you, what is the error that the Bible tells, tell, tells us that we're not seeing? Okay, so number one, uh, Jesus was unalive by crucifixion and he rose again. That's a fact. <laughs> his his, his uh, crucifixion is a fact of history. It's actually laughable. Uh, in the academy to claim that he wasn't because you don't have any evidence that he wasn't. Mm -hmm. Uh, But you you believe it anyway, okay, in spite of the consensus of scholarship. But we believe that he was crucified, just not, um, what do you call that he yeah, but, yeah, but, but understand what Surah 4, Ayah 157 says. It says two things. It doesn't just say he wasn't unalive. It says he wasn't even crucified. He never went through the process of crucifixion. So for you to say that we believe he was crucified, he just didn't die by the process of crucifixion, is to go against what you're, what you're granted. It wasn't, it wasn't God replaced him with someone else. He did. Yeah. That's what that's what the, the Muslim belief is, right? That's one of the Muslim beliefs. Right. Okay. What else? The other one, the other one is just basic historical type stuff, like Surah Five, Surah Al Maida, Ayah One uh, Fourteen. Allah took a covenant with those who called themselves Christians, but they forgot a portion of that which they were reminded. So Allah uh, sowed enmity and hatred amongst them until the day of resurrection. Okay. When and where did He make this covenant with Christians? Probably through Jesus. I mean, I, I don't know the okay, concept. We don't know my probabilities. Remember, I'm a Christian reading your book. And right. your book is indicting Christians uh, for for not following through a covenant mm-hmm. that they don't know anything about. We don't know what it is. And then and then you claim that Allah gave the Zabur to David. And in the Zabur 2514 of Psalm 2514, it says that Yahweh makes his covenant known to his servants who fear him. So he's going to let you know what the covenant is. So if Allah took a covenant with those who call themselves Christians, then we need to know what that is. Okay. Have you asked? So uh, they, they, these are, have you yes, asked I, I have. I have. I have. And like I said, whether it's the academy or it's the poor kid in the Bedouin uh, neighborhood living in a tent, they say this. What is the explanation? I'd like to know. The explanation is we don't need to know that. 
and the Quran is not a book of history. So Quran is so not Muslim, a book. Muslims when, they, the when you ask them when you ask them what the covenant is when it was re- revealed or when it was given by God, um, they say you don't need to know that. That's a, a explanation. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. But but I'm I'm talking to you, so maybe maybe you have a different approach. Well, I don't what know. I'm saying is that we're talking about verifiable history, like six centuries before Muhammad. There's not a there's not a century uh, that I know of that's had more spades, more brushes, more fingerprints on it than the first century. It's probably one of the most excavated uh, centuries in the in in the you know in the history of the world. So there's tons of information on who Jesus was, who his original disciples were, what his the covenant was that he made with them. And what I'm saying is if it's going to indict me, it's going to sow hatred and enmity amongst me and my brother, the word and I and my brother Kyber. I mean, I, I think maybe we need to know what that covenant was. And then it also claims that we forgot a portion of that which we were reminded. What was that? Seems like a just, holy, righteous God would let us know what the crimes are, or the you know the the, the things that were that we're being convicted of, yeah. or were you, you know. So I, I'm just saying these are tough. These are those are easy questions for us to answer. But if if I go back to the historical record and I show you what that covenant was as a Muslim, you're going to have to reject it because it's a blood covenant. Luke twenty two twenty which is Jesus inaugurating the new covenant, the Berit Hadashah, which was prophesied six centuries before he was born by Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 and 32. But it's a blood covenant, and it was ratified when he uh, was unalived on the cross. So okay. we, we know what it is, but you guys reject that, so it has to be something else. And I just think that that's a real simple historical claim that you guys need to qualify or you should be able to qualify if, in fact, it's true. Other than that, we, me and other Christians hate each other because we failed to follow through a a covenant that we don't even know what it was. Like, I'm, you know, I'm paying, I'm making monthly payments on a on a car I never bought. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So. So it's those types of issues. Okay, so I mean, uh, I'll say two things about that. One, I would say go talk to a Muslim scholar who is actually educated uh, on both religions, you know, and ask them the question sincerely and see if they can provide you an answer. That's, That's the first thing I'd say. The second thing I'd say is that I think... You know, asking that question is kind of a waste because, you know, there's a, a, a final prophet that came out, you know, for uh, how many years after Jesus um, and completed the message of God. So maybe you guys should open this new book and look into that. And, you know. Yeah. But what we're telling you is we have looked into the book and they don't line up with the previous book and they don't even, I mean, you see nothing about it theologically or anything about it that lines up with a, like a previous revelation. I mean, it, even Jesus every himself turn, said that he is the, the one with the seal. Book. Okay. Uh, I, I wouldn't look for an exact alignment, you know, I mean, but are you are you are you saying that that the Quran and Islam does not uh, align with an Abrahamic faith? Do you not think that Islam is an Abrahamic faith? Not at all. It don't align with the core doctrine of Abraham of the Abrahamic faith. How? Just like just like how you how do you atone for your sins? It's definitely not the suicide of God, right? Hold on, naked. Hold on, naked. I'm talking to TV. How do you atone for your sins, TV? You don't. We don't have atonement in our See? Life. Hold on. The previous Abrahamic faiths actually have atonement for their sin. First, okay. it started off with animals. First, it started well with animals and purifying themselves through the high priest in the temple, sacrificing the apple. An animal, discover your sins for a year. 
then after a minute, the God, he, well, from the beginning, he said he was going to provide his own sacrifice. And his own sacrifice ended up be, becoming the Messiah, Jesus Christ, that you also have in your in your own Quran. But you don't know what the Messiah means because the Quran actually takes it and don't take the context of it and put it into your scriptures and it don't let you know you just know jesus is the messiah because allah said he's the messiah but he's going to be the messiah for certain reasons certain qualifications certain uh prophecies that he had to fulfill to become the messiah and the messiah said it is the same as the suffering servant in isaiah the suffering servant was going to come and die for all the sins of humanity reaching from the from starting at the house of israel all the way to the nations all nations of the gentiles this is what it is that you don't have in your Quran. Okay. Now, if God is never changing and God is the same, he's not going to just scrap something he's been doing for almost 4,000 years until, until you come to Arabia. You come to Arabia in a you know desert Arab, come running out of a cave saying he got revelation and it don't even line up with nothing in the previous scriptures. Uh, I'm not here to argue, debate, pick anybody's religion apart. I still consider the, the Bible a holy book, but it's just a holy book that's been adulterated, right? So there's still a lot but of you value. Have to prove, you have to prove that. Those are claims that you have to qualify.